In part one of this series, we looked at a few mods that had come out for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And since that video, many more mods have come out. Some changing the UI, some adding functionality or tweaking functionality, and yet more mods changing the way the game looks. However, one mod that caught my attention is a mod that adds something I, as a mod tester and mod user, consider to be essential. One of the features of games such as Skyrim that many of us in the modern community are used to is the console, the developer console. We can just press a button, bring it up, and type a lot of very, very helpful things. So, for example, if I type help gold, I get a list of all the items in the game that have the word gold in it, or I can even do something like player dot add item, I believe it's F, 10,000. And that has just added 10,000 gold to my pockets. So there are a lot of things that I can do with the console that, well, they could be considered cheating, but they're also, that are useful for testing mods, trying out mods, or just doing some very cool things. For example, one of the cool things to do is to go into free cam mode. So I'm now in free cam mode, and if I then move around, as you can see, I've left my character behind and I can zip around the world totally and utterly unencumbered by a body. Um, let me just reduce the movement rate to say four. And of course this can be helpful for all sorts of things. Video work especially. Screenshots, if you want to take a cool screenshot. If you just want to you know, if you're working on some armor and you really want to look at it from a different angle, right down low. Or, as I said, if you are a video maker who likes very, very cool shots. It's just one of those things we have grown accustomed to over the years. However, in Witcher 3, that was just not possible until now. If you use a mod called Debug Console Enabler, you can press the tilde key, which is the key next to the one key, or the F2 key, and you now get the developer console. And there are a long list of commands available to you. I will leave a link down below. That is actually a link given by the mod author. I haven't tried many of them myself, and I'm gonna to have to spend some time figuring them out. However, I have found one, well, I was given one, particular command that allows you to play as somebody else in the game, another character in the game. This is a probably not much of a spoiler, to be honest. This is probably not much of a spoiler if you've been watching any video or any read any information about this game. However, if you don't want to know anything about what is coming and you don't want to see a certain character's face, I'm going to leave a link right now. You can click that and skip this part and just go off and try the instruction to yourself, okay? So there should be a link on screen right now. Click it, it will push forward past this small spoiler. Okay? Right, for those of you still here, you can actually play as Siri. If I type in Siri, Geralt, replace player, and then enter. I've then got to press the either F2 or the tilde key. Again, the tilde key is the key next to the one on most keyboards. I can now play a Siri. Okay, spoiler over. <laughs> so, you now have a console and you can try out the various commands and see what you can do. But the other thing you have is free cam. If you press the F1 button, you go into free cam. As you can see, it looks kind of like first person. What you're actually seeing is from the inside of Geralt's head. So if I move out of his head, turn around. Uh, one thing I will tell you in the free cam is that it does not remember your reverse Y axis setting. So if you like to play with mouse reverse or controller reverse, as some of us do, I know that's probably already causing some 
argument and descriptions. Why would you want to do that? Just, just, let's have that conversation another time. But as you can see, I'm a little unsteady because I'm having to play with not reversed y-axis. However, as you can clearly see, I am zooming around the map. I haven't figured out how to slow down. So, I've actually found, if you bear with me a second, I'm going to plug in my controller. Okay, got my controller installed. As you can see, gamepad detected, control scheme changed, and if I press F1, go into first person. It is still not using the reversed y-axis, so I'm still going to have to be a little careful about where I look. But as you can see, I've got a lot more uh, fine-tuned control. If you're going to be doing video work where you use free cam in The Witcher 3, I really do suggest trying a controller. I am not a natural controller user by any stretch of the imagination, but I have found that for, con for you know, this type of footage, the controller is far better. I will probably figure out what the command is to move slower with the mouse as well whilst in free cam mode. However, I don't actually mind using the controller for this sort of thing. It is actually a lot more pleasant to watch videos made with this kind of a device, I think. So there you go, free cam. Now this is not just going to be useful for modders testing things and video makers like myself. It is also going to be something that people who want to make screenshots can use. You can get some really, really nice shots of the world, post them on your favorite website, the Nexus perhaps, and you get a lot more freedom. So this is a really nice addition. I think this is one of these mods that's going to stay in my game. You will notice, talk to the Guardian Soldier, you will notice the odd glitch in animation. See the kid there? I've noticed a few times that the animations get glitched while in this mode, but hey, you're in developer console mode. The other thing I've noticed is if you get far enough away, you will start seeing even more problems. People with faces missing, and if you get far enough, there will be no people and no creatures. Obviously, the game was never meant to be seen from this angle. You certainly can't play it. What you are doing is looking at the world using the developer console. If you look at the chickens here, they're not being animated. Now, that is actually good news. That is good news. What, what the game is doing is it is only animating and adding textures to things it needs to. If you're playing this game normally, let's be honest, you don't need to see the faces on these people. And so it doesn't load them. That actually makes the game perform a lot better. It does, of course, mean whilst messing around in this mode, you will see some very amusing things. <laughs> To install the debug console enabler, just go along to the Nexus page, the file section, and download the latest version. At the time of making this video, that is version 0.2, and I'm going to download mine manually to my desktop. Once that is done, I am going to right-click and extract the debug console, and I'm going to leave the name as it is suggested, and then I'll open that folder, have a quick look inside. It has a readme that tells you, well, basically how to use it and how to install it. The installation is actually pretty easy. You've got to go along to your Witcher 3 Wild Hunt installation. Um, for me, it's GOG Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And go along to the bin folder x64. And you just need to copy all of the files. In actuality, all you really need are the plugins folder and ds.dll. So I'm going to select those and copy, right click and paste. And that is it. That is actually now installed. And if you need to uninstall it, simply go along to the same folder, which are three wild hunt bin x64 and delete the plugins folder and the d sound.dll file. Just delete those and everything will go back to normal.
Now, if you are going to use a controller and a mouse and keyboard at the same time for this sort of thing, one of the things you're going to get a little annoyed by, at least I am, is when switching, you get this little gamepad detected message. And then when I go back to my mouse and keyboard, I get the same little message. It can get a little irritating. I don't need to be told that I've switched devices. Thank you very much. Luckily, there is a mod that will fix that. It is called ABC, a bit cleaner UI for The Witcher 3. So I'm going to install that now. Go along to the file section on the Nexus page and download manually once more to my desktop. And again, once it's downloaded, I'm going to right click and extract that archive. Open up that folder, right. The installation is to ex extract the content of the zip into the main folder. In actual fact, bin config base. If I go along to my Witcher folder, bin config base, I need to replace the hidden file. I'm going to rename this one to be Vanilla. Yes, thank you. And then I'm going to copy this and paste it in its place. That way I can, in fact, remove this if I decide to change back. If I suddenly decide I want the actual file back. He does, from the looks of things, include a copy of the vanilla file for you to put back if for some reason you've deleted that, which is uh, a nice thought, actually. So there you go, that is now installed. So once back in game, move around with my controller a little bit. There you go. Nice smooth movement with the controllers. And then I'm gonna open the menu with my keyboard. And as you saw, no problem. I'm gonna use my mouse. And once more, controller, no message. Now, you will see the message pop up when you first load the game, and you may even see it in the start menu when you first start the game. It will still be working there, but it quickly disappears, and then once in-game, you can just quickly switch between, there you go, controller, and now mouse and keyboard, and no message, which I think is a vast improvement. So if, like me, you are going to use the controller for the odd thing, or if, like some people do, they use the controller for most of their play, but they have the keyboard for certain hotkeys, and you don't want to keep seeing that message, this mod is probably going to be one you want to look at. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it. I will be keeping my eyes open for more interesting Witcher 3 mods, and I will showcase them to you when and as I find them. You are more than welcome to join me for those videos, and I look forward to seeing you there if you do. But until then, remember, as always, have fun.